you have your Bibles, turn to uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 4. We are, are in our last uh, sermon in this series called God's Amazing Church. We've talked about what a church should be, and um, we're going to look today in the last words of the Apostle Paul. Uh, 2 Timothy was the last uh, book that he wrote. Uh, he was in prison uh, awaiting uh, what would end up being his death as he was beheaded there. Paul had a very unusual beginning to his ministry. He was a Jew. He was uh, taught uh, by syn- in the synagogue school at Jerusalem. He was very much a, a high student of uh, Judaism there. And in such zeal to serve the religion, get that word religion, he was going around uh, capturing people who were followers of Christ, Christians, and was having them jailed, where they would be uh, sentenced for simply being a follower of Christ. Many would even be put to death. And he was going to Damascus to uh, find followers of Christ there, and that's where he met the Lord, was on the Damascus Road. And his life was never the same. If you've had a true encounter with God, you'll never forget it. If you've had an encounter with a holy God in the person of Jesus Christ, it changes everything. It changes your attitude, it changes your desires, it changes, can I say it this this way, it changes your want to, and and everything becomes about the Lord, and it it adds new colors and and vibrance to your life, and it it brings joy to your living that's just so very, very special. Paul went on to write half of the New Testament. He was an apostle. We would say he was a pastor to the local church, the greatest church planner probably ever, as he would just go into like Corinth, the city of 100,000 people, and it was just Paul there going in. Maybe there was a couple other Christians that were there, but God did such a mighty work, it turned that city upside down. And and really, can I read you Paul's resume? I think it'll kind of help as we talk about uh, his last words. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Just listen to what it says. Um, What I speak, I speak not according to the Lord, but as it were foolishly in the confidence of boasting. Um, He said, um, let me make sure I've got the right place here. Yeah, I'm I'm right there. Exactly where I'm supposed to be. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. He says, I am more. In labors, more abundantly. That word labor there means to work to the place of exhaustion. He said, I did it even more. In stripes above measure, in prison and more frequently, in deaths often. This is his resume. He says, from the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and day I've been in the deep. Could you imagine just spending all day and in the black of night, which must seem so very, very long, maybe holding on to a piece of driftwood. I don't know if he was just floating, but just there alone, there just looking for the grace of God, crying out. He said, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold, in nakedness, literally not having sufficient clothes, just worn out. I wonder after how many, what his clothes looked like after he was whipped with the cat of nine tails. And he says, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for the churches. He said, of all those things that are there, that I've gone through for the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, but every day I love and I pray for 
the church. It's easy for some people to minimize the church. It's not just a a lot of land. It's not just a building by the road. It's not just a place. It's people. But we are not, we, we are the, we don't lose Christ when we walk out the doors. We take Christ with us. <clears throat> but there's something special when God's people meet together in his name, for his glory. The, the song of our, our, our heart being cried out, not just going through music. The words that come upon us, the moving of his spirit in our souls, where nothing else could stir us, Christ stirs us. When we think of the goodness and the glories of God, it is out of that great love that Paul lived his life. It is out of that great love that we're going to look at these words today. If you have your Bible, turn to uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 4, verse number 17. If you would, stand with me in honor of reading God's Word as we look at this one little paragraph that we will highlight today. This is what God's Word says. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I'm going to ask that you would once again, as we have come together in your name, Lord, in your heart, we ask, Lord, that you send your spirit to us. Speak clearly to us. Draw us close in your arms of love. Father, in the next few moments, would you give us great attention as our spirit and your spirit become one? May we honor you by hearing your word. Holy Spirit, speak as you can. Draw us to Christ, our home base, our hope, the love of our life. Father, remind us of what we have. May we never take it for granted. Lord, I pray in the next few moments as we come before your throne of grace, that we would hear, that Lord, we would be blessed, and that we would pour out our love before you. Father, only by you can we do this. Only through you do we stand. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you be seated? I want us just to quickly to look at this fourth chapter before we highlight this one little paragraph because I think it'll set the tone for what we need to look at today. When we get to verse 1, Paul says to young Timothy, I charge you. I believe we could say that through the infallibility of Scripture that that's the same charge that if you're hearing my voice, I pray that you hear the Holy Spirit's voice because God has a charge for His church today. You, the people that are bound together in God's love, He said, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Here is his charge. Preach the word. Now, I will preach the word this morning, but I'm not the only preacher. Everyone who knows the Lord Jesus Christ has a ministry and has a voice, has a testimony, and has a time where you can proclaim the goodness of God. The other day as I was walking there at Uh, Actually, as I was in a store, and I was walking out, and I saw a woman with two young children, and God just spoke to me and said, speak to this young lady. Wherever you are, no matter what you're doing, we have the Holy Spirit with us. We have the ministry. We don't just have to get dressed up and put on church clothes, and we don't have to be carrying our Bible in our hands. Everywhere that we go, we are an ambassador for Christ. The word apostle literally meant called out one, but we have an opportunity to preach wherever we go. He said, preach the word. Be ready. Be ready to say a word in season and out of season. When you do, convince, rebuke, encourage, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. 
For the time will come, I believe that time is today, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fable. He said here that the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I believe that their desires will dictate their doctrine. When it should be, our doctrine will dictate our desires. People are following their own desires, and people are changing everything to fit them, and that's their doctrine. A lot of people are going to bow their knee to the world today, and that's a sad, sad fact. So they'll find somebody that will teach them and tell them that, that this world is their home, and everything is about them. There's a lot of preaching today that does not stand up to the Word of God. There's a lot of preaching today that says if you follow God, you'll have all the money you want, you'll have no sicknesses, you'll have all this pleasure, you'll have all this joy. You know what? If, if Christ would hear, they'd try to preach that message to Jesus, but that won't work. He is worthy of our devotion. His truths are the ones that we need to tune our ears into. All the rest, sad that it is, all the rest will just fall by the wayside. And people who put their lives behind it will find out that it's shallow and empty, and it really doesn't help. He says here to them, he, he gives even uh, young Timothy his admonition. He said in verse 5, be watchful in all things. Endure affliction. That means you're going to be going through it. You just have to remain under it. Do the work of an evangelist. Tell the good news. Fulfill the ministry that God has for you. Church, listen to me. Your great privilege is to fulfill the mission, the ministry God's given you. You need to find it. You need to know it. You need to wake up to it. You need to serve it. If you're not sure what it is, you need to find out quick. The whisper of the Holy Spirit will lead you in that right direction. This is the work of His church. He said in verse 7, I'm ready to go to heaven. Are you? He's in jail. He knows that any day could be the last day, but hear His words. Verse 6, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. He knows it. Other writings, he said, I, I've got time. I, I, I'm here on purpose. I'd rather be there. Philippians 2. I'd rather be there, but I know God has me here. But here he's saying, my time, my time is short. My time of departure is at hand. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, not to me only, but also to all those who love his appearing. He said, I'm ready to go. If God calls me, I'm ready to go today. I've done everything. I'm living my life that I'm going to leave nothing undone. I'm going to do everything while God has, for, has me here. But he also says the ministry is a lonely place. It's a lonely place. Look in verse 9. Be diligent, he says to young Timothy, to come to me quickly. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Does that not sound like a lot of people today? They've fallen in love with this world. John said, love not this world, neither the things that are in this world. But a lot of people have. He said, for Demas has for forsaken me, having loved this present world, has departed for Thessalonica, Cretans for Galatia, Tysus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. So get Mark and bring him with you, for he's useful to me for ministry. Thachias, I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas when you come. And the books, oh, especially the parchments. Bring me the scriptures, he is saying, when you come. And then there's that one, Alexander. I guess all of us are going to have an Alexander in our lives. Alexander did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must beware of him, he says to Timothy, for he has greatly resisted our words. Verse 16, hear this. 
You can hear the loneliness in it. He says, my first defense, no one stood with me. For God, for all forsook me, may it not be charged against them. All forsook him, he says, but he was not alone. It's a lonely ministry sometimes here on earth. It's hard ministry sometimes here on earth. But look what he says in verse 17 of our scripture today. But the Lord stood with me. Could you imagine what it was like for Paul to be there and be in chains and bonds? And he said there, when they took me before the judge, when I had to stand up and on trial, at my first defense, no one was with me there. He was all alone. But he said, but the Lord was with me. The Lord stood by my side. Not only did Jesus say, I will never leave you, never forsake you, but when you're going through hard times, when you're going through difficult times, Jesus will be right there with you. He didn't need a defense attorney. He already had the greatest advocate anybody could ever want. And he didn't really have to worry about the judge that he stood before because he had already been pardoned by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Listen to me. If you're living for Christ, Satan's going to come against you. But if you've already been pardoned, if you've already been set free, what do you care what the world has to say about you? Have you ever faced those difficulties and those hardships? You ever felt alone? abandoned? You ever felt misunderstood? You ever felt defeated? Like everything that you did really didn't matter? But he said, not only did the Lord stand my, by me, he said in verse 17, but he also strengthened me. You ever been tired and weary? Strength for the journey is what you need every day. And everything seems to be coming against you, but yet the Lord's there to give you the strength that you need. Every day, the portion of strength that you need to fulfill the ministry, to just to walk the walk, to live the life. It's obviously, it's obvious that God didn't take away the difficulties. He just strengthened him in the middle of the difficulties. He was there in jail writing this letter he wasn't depressed. He wasn't downtrodden. He allowed the Lord to come there and be with him there and strengthen him there. So many people today are, are acting like they want heaven on earth. Lord, give me the riches. Lord, deal with those idiotic people. Lord, I never want to have another medical hardship. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. A lot of people are praying and they're looking to have heaven on earth. Paul already had his promise of heaven. So while he was on earth, he wasn't going to worry about those things. He was going to preach the the joys of heaven while he was on earth so that people could find God and live the joys of heaven one day. By the way, he says here, so that the message could be preached fully. I love that. Fully. I want God to get the very best of me I want God to get all of me and I want to represent Him every moment of every day. I was reminded this past week, Southern Baptist Convention, that we have to be on guard all the time. That there's going to be some temptations that come. There are going to be some difficulties that come. There's going to be, can I use this word? I, I kind of like this word aggravations that come. Y'all ever get aggravated? And you want to just almost give up for a moment? May we never give up. May we never give up. I like what he says here. He says, 
He said, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached completely, fully through me. In, in verse 6, he said, I am already being poured out as a drink offering. It, it's like his life is, a, is an offering and is a ministry, and you would take the drink offering and you would pour it out. And, and you've heard me use this. It's like taking a cup and I want to get every drop out of it. I want my life to be fully given unto the God who deserves the very best. He said, even the Gentiles, when he's there in the Roman prison, even they need to hear the gospel as well. Paul was never alone. And Paul faced the enemy. Look what it says there at the end of verse 17. And also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. You know what, what I think he was talking about is what Peter talked about in 1 Peter 5 when he said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's what Satan's called. He's called a roaring lion. That lion, the king of the jungle, I am told that when he comes and gives that roar, that it'll just make everybody just stop and freeze in, in, in anxiety and fear. That's really what Satan likes to do. He's loud, but you know, the Lord's more effective with a still, small voice. The Lord's not trying to scare you. He came to give you life and to give it abundantly. He came so that you can have His love and His peace overflowing within you. He takes away our fears. He delivers us from the enemy. I like here, out of the mouth of the enemy. Sometimes all Satan wants to do is roar his words. May we not listen to Satan's words. May we listen to Jesus' words. He says here, I will deliver him from every evil work. By the way, Satan doesn't stop attacking. He's always going to be attacking. Jesus just takes away the effectiveness of Satan's attack. My, my great friend, Jeff Freeman, called me this week. We were, we were supposed to go to a concert on Tuesday together, and they changed it to uh, July 17th. And, and uh, I said, well, can't do that. That's vacation Bible school. I, I can't do that. They changed it to a Sunday night. Uh, can, can I confess? I, I was going to go see the Doobie Brothers with, with, uh, with Jeff. So he called me and said, hey, I got, I got tickets for us. We're going to go Friday night. We're going to go see Sticks and REO Speedwagon and Loverboy. Some of y'all knew the 70s. Uh, by the way, they've changed. I think Loverboy's gained about 80 pounds. He is fulfilling his ministry, I guarantee you that. But we were just there and we were just uh, just two friends, you know, talking and all that, and 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 he looked over at me, and we had been we were talking about church and and all that God was doing. He said, he said, Brian, I've got greater peace now than any other time I've ever had in my my ministry. And I looked at him, and I said, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm not saying things are easy. I'm not saying I've got all the answers because y'all know that I don't. I'm not saying that that everything is just just uh, peaches and cream. It's, it's a lot of hardship. It's a lot of difficulties. It's a lot of things that we all have to face and we go through. But there's something about it when the Lord is with you there. When He delivers you not only out of the mouth of the lion, the roaring of the lion, not only does He deliver you from every evil work, He's there to bless you with peace. And if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, you're missing something because the Lord wants you to have it. He's not holding out. That's His desire for you. You know, Job's friends came preaching a gospel to him that if he could, he could just change his life, everything would be good. God wasn't good with that preaching. God was good with Job. 
And I tell you what, when the Lord comes, if the Lord comes today and he sees us in the midst of this immoral world that we're living in today, trying to live for Christ, trying to be faithful, trying to stay, stick with the stuff, trying when, when everybody else is wanting just things for the, the creature comforts of themselves, but yet we're, str we're, we're seeking to be faithful to God in that time. And the Lord gives us peace. I want the Lord, when if He comes today, I want Him to know in my life, I'm doing my best to give Him my best. Every evil work, no matter what you're facing, <laughs> I wrote in my notes here, listen to this. He's there with more power than this world has ever seen. Paul was not alone. Paul faced his enemy, but Paul was safe from his enemy. Look what it says here. He said, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work, listen to this now, and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. The word preserve there means to keep safe. To save. To deliver. To protect. In the midst of a, a cold underground jail cell where just a little bit of light is coming through the skylight up there. Jailed. Chained to Roman soldiers on both sides. In that place, he said, he is preserving me safe and secure. There's no safer place than in the arms of God, in the will of God, on the way to see God. Paul had many wonderful moments. I think about when Paul and Silas were in jail there at Philippi. There they were. They had been beaten. Their backs were bleeding. They just said, you know, it would be a good time for us to have a church moment. They begin to sing. They begin to praise God. Not for their circumstances, because God was there with them. And something began to, to happen in that place that God inhabited their praise. It should be such in our church services that God's people are so in love with Him. When they come, they're not looking for a, a musician or a song to, to stir them. But their heart is so in love with God that the Holy Spirit meets them there and heaven meets them there. In the middle of a jail cell, they begin to praise God in worship and song and the building was shook by the presence of God. I wonder how many times in Paul's ministry, maybe when he was shipwrecked, or maybe when he was stoned, or maybe when he was whipped or beaten with rods, or maybe when he was just all by himself and everyone had left him, but yet the Holy Spirit burned a fire within him. The blessings of God were there in worship and prayer basking in the walk of God and the faithfulness of God. And by the way, it doesn't matter what you're facing. You don't have to wait for service to have a worship service. You can have a holy fit anywhere you are. Just clear out a spot and start praising God and praying to God. Start giving glory to God in the middle of your circumstances. A lot of people don't know what I'm talking about because they've never done it personally themselves. You, don't, you need more than just watching somebody else do it. You need to have a holy rapture in your own life before the rapture comes that God calls you to heaven. Maybe you can have a rapture, maybe you will have a rupture, but it'll be just fine. Because when you get in the presence of God and all the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace, Paul wasn't alone. Paul could face any, any enemy because he was safe from the enemy in the arms of God. What's it going to take for the church to wake up and worship? What's it going to take for the church to be alive? What would it be like if someone in desperate need of a holy God were to walk through the doors back there and come in and sit down. And their heart, <laughs> God help me, and their heart 
was in need. What would they find at New Holland Baptist Church? Could they look around and see the glow of the glory of God on the faces of everyone else? They might think we were very holy people because everybody has their heads bowed and their eyes closed. I don't know. But folks, listen to me. This is dress rehearsal for heaven to come. If you can't find the Lord here, don't miss him there. To him be glory and honor. To him be glory forever and ever. To let him be the glory of our life, to be living for the glory of God, basking in his glory forever and ever. Nothing else will do. Nothing else will matter. With all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, living for the presence of Christ, for the goodness of Christ, for the glory of Christ, in the power of Christ, it is true. So be it. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim when we do.